You're listening to the Sketchnote Army Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rohde, the author of the Sketchnote Handbook and the Sketchnote Workbook. And this is the podcast where I chat with sketchnoters and visual thinkers and try to understand what makes them tick. This season of the Sketchnote Army Podcast is presented to you by the Sketchnote Handbook's 10th birthday. And we're giving you the gifts. Save 50% when you buy any two of the Sketchnote Handbook, the Sketchnote Workbook, or the Sketchnote Handbook video together as a set. Offer applies to both the print and ebook editions of the books. Use discount code HAPPY10 at checkout to apply savings. That's HAPPY10. For details on this offer, visit rodesign.com slash HAPPY10. That's rodesign.com slash HAPPY10. Offer ends December 31st, 2022, so buy yours today. And now, on with the show. Hey everyone, I'm here with Natalia Tarkowska. Welcome, Natalia, to the show, and we're really happy to have you with us. Thank you so much. I'm excited, Mike. It's good to have you. Long time no here. Yeah, Yeah. I've I've been a huge fan of yours. We've been talking for years and years and years and years um, since, I think, back when the book released 10 years ago, we've been discussing and chatting and watching each other's work, so... Um, thank you for being on the show. Um, let's go ahead and just get thank started. You for having me. You're, you're so welcome. It's an honor to have you. Um, tell us a little about who you are, because I know who you are, but maybe others who are listening, maybe they don't know who you are. So let's let you start there. Ooh, that's a deep question if you want to make it deep. Mm. <laughs> uh, but let's make the basics right. Uh, my name is Natalia Talkowska. I'm a graphic recorder. I'm an artist. I'm a strategist. Mm-hmm. I'm a visual practitioner, whatever you want to call it these days. Uh, I help people problem solve through visual communication. Uh, I guess that's a good way to put it. And I run a company called Natalka Design in London for 11 years now. Wow. I feel old. Congratulations. Thank you. And so um, what kind of work do you do? You you talked about being a graphic recorder. Is it mainly in the front of the room kind of work? Or do you do digital stuff? Like, tell us a little bit about the kind of work you do. So that's how I started, running around with pens, super yeah. sweaty, not knowing what to do, buying big papers that no one could you know, even measure back then and just kind of doing everything on my own, which mm-hmm. I uh, know from my friends in the space that that's how everyone starts. And yeah. some people very much continue that route with their beautiful art. Um, my business, uh, I'm very grateful to say, developed into working with uh, a team. I've got a small team and I mm-hmm. work with beautiful freelance um, contractors, people, talent that I know for many, many years now. It's 50 plus of us at this point, consultants, wow. designers, animators, uh, strategists, um, you name it. And depending on the project, I create a beautiful team that mm. can help someone. So I'm very much, I started myself just drawing with a pen and now it's much more behind the scenes doing mm. the business and thinking of creative new ways how we can help. Mm. That's really great to hear. That's such a great progression as well. And, you know, expanding and giving opportunities to more people to join you is really fun, right? I've done team work where I've led teams on Kickstarter campaigns and books and things. And it's really fun when you get a team together and they all kind of align in the right direction. It's just really exciting. It's a different kind of oh an excitement, God. right? Like there's yeah, the, yeah, love it. There's sort of the excitement when you do it yourself, right? There's that's one kind of an excitement, but there's a different kind of excitement when a team works through it. Could, totally agree. Totally what? agree. And often they're better than me, and I just yeah. kind of almost want to learn from them. And whenever there's a project, I always learn how they work. So it's kind mm-hmm. of always a learning curve, which I love. Hmm. That's really great. That's great. And you're based in London. Um, yes. So there's something else that you do, doodly do, which I want to talk about a little bit. So talk a little bit about that and what that's about and how that works. So doodly do is a bit of a mischievous child of Natalka Design, <laughs> if I may say. That's how I always <laughs> called it. It sits under Natalka Design. It's easiest way to kind of offer it as a product under the umbrella of our creative space. Um, I started kind of two years after I started Natalka Design. So kind of it's around nine years now. And basically, it's doodle events um, for adults, mainly. Mm-hmm. We also did it for kids, but it's to get everyone together, to storytell, to connect, to exchange. We do it for teams. We do it for corporates. We do it private events. We do VIP events for brands. And we do it for public. Um, we actually, at some point, did like 25 different countries. That, that went a wow. bit crazy. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow, that's really great. And I remembered it from when it was expanding. So hearing all the variations that you're doing now is really exciting to hear that you're doing it VIP events and what would a VIP doodly do event look like as an example? You, you know what, Mike, it's very simple. A brand <laughs> will come and say, everyone is going to have this dinner and we're going to present this product and they need to engage. And it's mm -hmm. going to be quite boring if we don't do more than a dinner. <laughs> so, you know, and we want them to talk. We want them to think of it as a memorable experience. We want them to get creative. So when you get a brief like that, it's very almost easy to insert a, a proposal like that in terms yeah. of a why don't they eat and we entertain with doodle games as we go. Mm. And usually it's a, it's a kind of a winner of getting them to feel happy and sharing and excited and connecting whilst they're enjoying a launch of a new product, say. So that would be an example of a brief, mm. I guess. That's really great. That, that's great to hear how you're applying it. Because I think, you know, um, those who are listening could apply that. Say they work in a company, they're into sketch noting and they're having a dinner. Now they have an idea where why don't we have doodle games, right? So you could, they can apply in a lot of different places where um, you need something unique. So that's really great to hear. Are there any other yeah, things exactly. that you do as well as doodly do is, are there any other sub uh, items that you guys are working on? I mean, when do we not work on something, Mike, right? <laughs> the brain is always on, right? It's yeah. like a bit of a curse. <laughs> So a bit of a curse and a gift. So, you know, the, the mind is always thinking based on the experiences we have with clients or other people or purely conversations with even strangers, mm -hmm. uh, what else could be needed? What else can help you with anything you want to achieve to engage another human onto problem solve? So I would like, if I said we don't work on something in the, in the background, so there's a um, few projects that I can't discuss yet sure, um, equally. Um, recently, we shared a new service uh, with our um, creative, let's call it sister design studio based in Chicago, actually, um, led by Sir George Berlin. Um, and we've launched a new service called Doodle Maps, where we basically mm. project anything you want in any space, uh, which uh, gets everyone in the offices excited. So we're working mm. on a few projects there. Yeah, that sounds great. I, I just I had the sense that you probably have things bubbling on the stove all the time, right? And wait for that little uh, pot to be ready and pull it off and then serve it. So that's really great. Yeah. to hear. And some of them, you know, die out. And that's okay, too. <laughs> you know, it's you for to the brain to just come up with stuff. Exactly. exactly. So now I'm really curious. So knowing knowing a little bit more about you, talk to me about how did you get to where you are now with this 50 person team, uh, Natalka Design? You know, going back, you mentioned that you started solo and you're running around with markers. Bring us back to maybe when you were a little kid. What was it like as a little kid and how did that lead you to where you're at? And what were the important things that happened along the way? Basically, your origin story. Oh, wow. So I always say, do you want the espresso version or the wine version? I think we need <laughs> you know, the wine version. Oh. For, this group, oh, we need, wow. for this group, we need the wine version. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll try to be as informative as I can. But... Um, when you go back way back when when i'm a little girl you're looking at a post communist small town in poland where mm. i'm from uh, which means that when you look around there's very much concrete there's very much big blocks there's very much people getting to work back to work mm -hmm. uh, post-war and everything so my growing up was very kind of you have to make your days creative and find creativity around you because let's say it's not like everything can be given to you. You can't travel anywhere you want. The town doesn't look beautiful architecturally or inspirationally enough. There's no yeah. art museums or anything like that. So how do you, you know, bring that creativity to your mind where, where you can find your escapism, I guess. And I found escapism in drawing. And I yeah. always laugh that it's the whole 10,000 hours, isn't it? Where you yeah. become a professional without even knowing, I guess, if you put 10,000 hours or more. So I call drawing as my escapism, as something that I loved doing as a kid, as um, something that um, developed on its own without being asked. It's like the longest internship in my life um, <laughs> that I would never think will become anything more than hobby. I used to love to draw manga, like Sailor Moon stuff and all the kind of Japanese anime stuff that was coming into the TV. I love Disney, probably like many of us here, you know, just anything visual that I could get inspired mm -hmm. by and kind of first copy very much I was copying and copying and copying like any other kid mm -hmm. um, and quickly realizing that you know I love to draw characters and I love to draw stories I made up my own comics books and paper and pens were always available in my house so mm. it seemed like a 
very easy hobby to get into, of course, mm -hmm. having that passion. Um, I was making figurines, I was creating shops and asking my mom to come and buy something, please, because I'm here <laughs> selling the things that you have in the kitchen. So you're looking at a, at a kid that really wanted to um, create some creative experiences in my own head and make them happen. I used to play violin for six years. So, so kind of a bit of a creative mix of stuff self-made mm -hmm. that brought me let's say into uh, this professional place i am right now that mm -hmm. you know allows me to do what i do hmm. so did you um you're talking about the small town in poland post-war so did you attend university in poland did you leave the country like how did the that middle part of your life where you graduated from school and maybe you're now in uh university what would what did that space look like and was that a pivot point for you Pivot, there was probably a few, but um, first BA degree in Poland, very much happy, bigger mm -hmm. city, explored more, saw more, friends, all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. what can I do with myself and everything, but still you're looking at a person who couldn't go to like art school or anything like that because there was no opportunities like this presented mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. me. So my second love, let's call it, was always language. So thank God I can speak to you right now and use mm -hmm. English. Thank you all the lessons and all the, you know, <laughs> classes that I that I took. Um, but English was my second love. I kind of went that way. So I, I studied uh, teaching English to foreigners. Mm -hmm. And then the first pivot, I think, uh, happened when some of my friends at the end of the year said, oh, should we go to London and do our MA there? And I was like, I mean, I never traveled to London nor anywhere else kind of mm -hmm. further than Germany or Greece or anywhere kind of accessible in Europe. Right. Um, so I asked my mom it wasn't the easiest decision because of course it's not cheap or it's right. not just kind of affordable but it did happen which i'm very grateful i did fly my it was my first flight to mm. london my mom filmed it literally it was big <laughs> big deal yeah and uh didn't know anyone didn't have any connections no no friends no, no job or anything like that i just went for this one year of study bilingual translation polish english english polish which mm -hmm. as you can see continues to be an uh, kind of a language thing because there yeah. was no me suddenly jumping into art school again mm -hmm. um and i loved it i i enjoyed the whole year i met amazing people and i think that's where i got the bug a bit in terms of being exposed to such a different culture mm -hmm. huge city so much to see so much to do i first time i learned about about what is networking event so what people like just meet for a coffee and like that's like what <laughs> like is that a thing you know like and just chat like <laughs> so i did a lot of meetups and ran around and just even when i was studying and i started working as a art teacher actually i could because of my background which was lovely and i um, taught special needs children which mm -hmm. i will be forever grateful as an experience I, I started working, but I also started meeting people and I had my business cards without even having a business. And I was like, <laughs> I draw, who needs my help? You know, so it was a bit like illustration here, illustration there, yeah. some sort of little poster, a little flyer, but no money, no earnings, no plans around it bigger than I draw. Um, mm. And that's kind of the middle part where I finished my studies and I was supposed to go back home mm -hmm. and I was too curious, was earning little money, but I stayed. And here's 14 years of me in London, kind of, wow. if I go forward, wow. yeah, oops. So somehow you survived in London, which is not an inexpensive city to live in, right? So it's oh, not yeah. cheap to live there. So you yeah. found a way to do it long enough to kind of figure out where, where you were going. When when did that, talk a little bit about that shift when you started doing graphic recording. What was the first one like? Who was the one that took the, the chance on, on you and that uh, gave me, you this opportunity? That yeah, no, it's it's a bit of a movie kind of a moment, I would say. If someone wants to ever do a biopic about me, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I always think like that because it's a bit of a right moment, right time, yeah. right person. You know how it is. It's, it doesn't yeah. always come out of nowhere. So I think it's a mix of being lucky, but equally being very active mm -hmm. to meet new people. Yeah. And even if that means just a coffee with no further action, no trying to sell something, just meeting new interesting people and telling mm -hmm. them about what I love to do mm -hmm. uh, brought me to a place where I tweeted a consultant business person who I knew through a friend of mine. And I was like, I would love to meet you. I, I like to draw. Would you have time for a coffee or something? And he was like, yeah, sure. Tomorrow, 7 a.m. or something. Tell me where. I'm like, you know, wow. I, I just was a bit shocked by the by the kind of response. And long story short he did travel all the way from 
East London to West London, where I was working in a startup at that point. I was mm. quite unhappy and long hours, little value bag. Um, you know, the drawing was somewhere in a pocket. Yeah. And I presented to him this like awkwardly looking portfolio of pictures and drawings and things. I gave my all. I was all red and passionate. And I, I don't know exactly what he said that day because I was really impressed and kind of like stunned by him. Mm -hmm. But he was very kind of like, okay, you've got a uh, definitely a talent here. What are you doing? Um, I don't know what he needs to do, but I would say leave your job. I'll help you. I don't know how I'm going to help you, but you've got a talent. What are you wasting your time for? And uh, here's my number. I'm a consultant. So sometimes I work with clients. I see you doing this visual stuff even at our workshops. But again, I don't know. Call me when you left the job and just like, this is like waste of your time, basically. Mm -hmm. wow. That's the vibe of the of the meeting. That's really interesting. <laughs> So I was like, well, what do you mean? Like, what, but how, and you know, when you are the only person to support yourself in, as you said, an expensive city and yeah. you don't have many savings and it's not a movie, <laughs> yeah. it's not so easy to just like, yeah, I'm going to leave the job and, you know, go for it. So right. I did leave my job, but before that, I definitely um, learned a bit more about who he, he is and what he does. And he took me in under, let's say, his mentorship. He decided to mentor me for like six months. Mm -hmm. And um, what he did is kind of something that I, I, I feel not many people would do. And I will be forever grateful where he literally said, I like without any forms or anything, leave this job. I'll support you for six months wow. with, let's say, 1K. And whatever you earn towards that will pay you less than that. This is my assistant. Um, again you're annoying me you have a talent you know you need to do something about it <laughs> and it was such a kick in the bum in terms of the moment in my life of someone believing in me mm -hmm. literally more than i even do which was yeah. like a bit crazy my mom of course was like who's this man and i was like mom you know let's try <laughs> uh you know that's a comedy on its own and i it, weirdly what it did is this reversible like psychology where i tried so hard in terms of the, the passion was so on to prove that I can do this and I do this well, whatever this visual thing is, that I very quickly didn't need almost like his financial support. I kind mm -hmm. of found some projects here and there and I was like, look, I've got the 400 pounds. Oh my God. Um, so it was a very interesting, super fast mentoring mm. experience where he kicked my bum. He taught me a lot about business, about people, about approach, about attitude towards business. That was a big one. Mm. And he's still my amazing friend and guardian angel and all that stuff. I mm. love him dearly and he knows that. Um, but what he did for me in the six months still feeds back to towards the gratitude level and the energy mm. levels that I have for what I do, which is quite crazy. Mm. So it sounds like he saw something like you were saying before he saw something in you that you couldn't yet see yourself when that was, you were ready, you're ripe and ready to go. But you couldn't, you know, you felt stuck. And he sort of made you unstuck. He released you from feeling that way. And then once that happened, you just sort of exploded and took off. Well, to be fair with you, it's, it's, I wish it was exploded. It was very much project after project, yeah. setting up my business in like 20 minutes in a bank, not thinking about what's going to be the name of my business. So this name <laughs> came in like five minutes after a banker asking me, what's the name of your business, miss? Natalka Design. <laughs> like, I didn't even think about it. My name is Natalia, but I've always been called Natalka by people oh. that are close to me. Yeah. There's nothing thing deeper than that Mike I wish there was <laughs> uh, but if I'm honest Google really likes that name because it's not yeah, an often name to use and it sounds to people it sounds Scandi I'll take it Scandi is quality so I'll take it um, and yeah and it basically was a lot of still doing things for free dra uh, traveling far sure. um, you know long hours doing things for very little money but constant like belief that I am doing this and this is what's going to happen. And mm. each project taught me something else. He took me under his first project with a um, corporate client. And basically, I was there with papers and markers, again, sweating. And he's like, well, Natalia is going to visualize what we're discussing. And I'm standing there like, you know, with my thumbs up. But inside, I'm like, sure, no who am I? I'm like an imposter and like a liar here. Yeah. But I did it. Of course, if I look at it now after 14 years, you know, my my critic side would be like, oh, that was so yeah. bad. But actually, the kind self would be like, well done, you. You actually did something you never for a second studied. Right. 
you know, in right. real time, you captured some key moments, right? Wow. So mm -hmm. that's kind of, it, it came from nowhere because I didn't know there's a job like that. Yeah, you sort of had, you sort of, in some ways, you made it for yourself, right? I mean, it, it existed, but you didn't know it yet. You had to make I it for yourself. I didn't know it yet. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, yeah, that was all new. It's interesting, too, I think the audience, right? So he saw that you bringing you into a business audience, like um, whatever you produced would be a level above whatever they've seen before, right? It would blow their minds. So, you know, you now with your years of experience looking back, I look back at my first sketch notes and I think, oh, what was I doing? Like, those are not that not as great as I remembered they were, right? They were interesting in the time. But you have to remember, like you said, I think you said earlier, it's about the right time and place like the moment right so when nothing existed like that before and now suddenly ex it exists it makes a huge difference so that to that audience and that moment for you and for them it was really valuable and oh, it gave you yeah. a you know a foundation point to build from Cor correct yeah for sure mm -hmm. well that sounds this is a, this is a really fascinating story i'm so glad that you gave us the wine version of it in a little bit more detail <laughs> <laughs> if you have a second bottle, I can continue, but I don't want to take over. Yeah, no, let's let's keep going for a little stories. while. Tell tell us yeah. a few more stories and how you let's look, okay, let's take from that meeting with those business people where you're working with your guardian angel up until I guess now. What would that if you gave us a an idea what that's like from then to now, which is like about ten years or something? Yeah, like that, right? nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a weird one because it's a roller coaster of very much for many years my doing things myself and mm -hmm. being very happy about it it's i think it's it's very much a choice as well it's not something that i planned where i'll, I'll expand my wings and kind of bring other talents into the game mm -hmm. uh, but it kind of happened like that that on my way i call it i don't know through my good persuasion skills or just talking to people very passionately and finding their passions i met wonderful people on the way who mm. helped me for free sometimes who helped me develop the business in terms of create some content around what i do film maybe my face first time that can make some sense Hi, I'm Natalia, and this is natalka design mm -hmm. um create a website uh, my first developer bless him wherever he is right now he made a huge change for me to have an online presence hmm. so along the way i bumped into amazing people and then as i go i i opened my eyes into the whole graphic storytelling and recording world mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. also found you very much on the internet and started following and i've seen the ted animations and it just was like a bit of a wow like people do that it, it is a thing mm -hmm. especially in the business where i kind of was very much thrown into the B2B side of things. Mm -hmm. So along the way, I just met amazing people, but that's like way into the kind of game. Like first, a lot of years, it was just me doing the whole business up and down, successes and fails, uh, very much undermining my skill, very much mm -hmm. over giving my time, undermining my value in terms of rates and everything, because mm -hmm. it wasn't even um, an active choice. It was more like, well, I hope they want me. Here I am, right. a bit of a shy version of me. Yeah. Still feeling like an imposter a lot of the time because, let's be honest, at least my experience of working in business very much and nothing against that in terms of that's the world. That's how the world uh, has been and um, changing slowly, but very much white older men in the room, you know. And and here's Natalia, a woman, a young woman coming from a different country with an accent. Mm -hmm. With this big board, how is she fitting in the scenario of a serious business conversation, right? right? Or a ma or strategy or a workshop. So I had to really work, I feel, extra hard to show my value and that mm -hmm. I am a valuable asset to this mm -hmm. experience and I can bring something to the table with my skills and they're very rare. And I just needed to, with time, believe that that's who I am and the more experiences I had the, the better it was getting in terms of my confidence um but yeah uh, I met some lovely people along the way and probably at some point it started with I have a cough can you come and help me mm. you know it could be even mm -hmm. unknowingly I was bringing in people to the table or I just felt a bit shy and I needed that support and I had very again very low rates I was you know there was no kind of uh, way to expand it any more than what I was being paid. Mm -hmm. So often I wanted to work with wonderful people, but their rates were way above me or whatever. So I couldn't. And I guess like step by step, I just found amazing people and just gave me the confidence to 
explore how can I step back a bit, which was really hard, not necessarily for me, but it was hard for my clients who were like, also, we're not getting you to like draw this mm. thing because we really want you. And it took me a lot of time to kind of, it's still a process, but we're getting there where I always want Natalka Design to be a creative space, to be a creative pool, to be a family of wonderful talent that can problem mm -hmm. solve. I didn't want it to be about me and I was a bit struggling that even yeah. the name of the business is about me. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so it was kind of an interesting, slow, very slow shift in terms of for the last maybe five or so years, we're a team and growing team, but uh, very much running with a marker and then an iPad for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would think that um, as you got to know your customers and your clients, that at some point they would have to trust that Natalka is going to choose a good person for us, like the right person who this person that they're a perfect fit for this opportunity and your team and uh, whatever. Right. So they're trusting your taste in is anything right at first they trusted your taste in drawing and being there and they wanted something that's a good thing but then that's got to be a tough transition where it's not necessarily me but it's my designated you know chosen person who i think is the right fit for that opportunity um and convincing the clients that that's okay it must have taken a little while it sounds like for that to happen but yeah maybe, for sure and but now you're in a good yeah, you're in, you're in a much uh, better place right yeah exactly it was it took a it, it took time and you know with new clients they didn't have to go through that exposure but mm -hmm. let's say with existing ones i had to really make them feel comfortable that the quality is there the training mm -hmm. is there the, it, you are getting i always say because they are so many people that work with me are so much more talented than me and i will always right. say that right. because for me it's exciting it's always been exciting to extend my creation beyond myself i feel like i'm getting more joy out of it I, i'm mm -hmm. getting more value for myself as a human even doing doodly do it always the, the reason for it was for me to kind of step outside of b2b myself as well and go mm -hmm. to the public and kind of show more people that, that this is so joyful and this is so creative and wonderful please join that world right so i really um feel very grateful that i i can give jobs to other people and i can let them thrive and grow as well mm. uh it, it it felt almost natural to me at some point mm. In some ways, it's like you're repaying the, the debt that you had to your guardian angel you talked about, right? So you're now finding other people who maybe they also, they have skills, they're talented, but they don't often believe in their their own skills and that you're spotting them and giving them opportunities. So in, in a lot of ways, you're repaying that and paying it forward with all these teams of people that you put out into the world, which is pretty cool. I want to believe in that. And that's kind of for sure what's happening subconsciously. And I'm also mm -hmm. a business coach these days and I coach younger people and I coach any sort of people that come my way through charities uh, that start businesses. And you know, if I can instill one kind of lesson into anyone about believing in what they already are doing, that's like almost, I feel like my mission in life mm -hmm. to kind of show that, you know, kind of believing that you're already doing it, you are yeah. that person is like number one thing that you can fly. That's, so that's really I really great. enjoy doing that. Hmm. That's great. Well, it, would you? Can you share with us? Um, I know you probably have projects you can't share because they're they're uh, under NDA or something. What's something that a fun something doesn't have to be a project? Could be something you're doing personally. Something you're excited about right now that you could share with us. Well, I think like the first one that comes my way is the new service that we started with George. So mm. we, we decided to do it jointly just because the skills are there. We wanted to, I, I know I don't know everything. I want to always learn. I don't have all the tools and the technology, uh, nor does George. And we decided to do something together in terms of his uh, strengths and he, his knowledge and mine internationally. And uh, we, we just, it was a very, how do I say that? Uh, you know, when something just flows, we were like, should we do something creative? I'm like, sure. And, and you know, it, it sounds like that, but we literally had few uh, cool conversations and we came up with this service where it means a lot after pandemic when we speak to our clients and everything, especially when I talk to them, many of them are not as excited to go out to offices, mm. their teams, there's so much the work from anywhere kind of, you know, mm. instilled a vibe, which many people are happy about, about, about but there's a lot of still properties and spaces that need people to be in them and to enjoy them. So we had a lot of conversations with uh, clients where they're like, 
I just need to make this more interesting. I need to make this more interactive. I need to bring more engagement to the space rather than just new stools and chairs. Mm -hmm. So we came up with what if this whole visual storytelling can come out of that iPad and come out of that print and kind of live um, in a more interactive way against humans. So he's got, as I said, the, the ideas and the tech, I've got the ideas and the design. And we just thought, how about we can create something that can interactively, uh, the visuals can work on any surface, any mm -hmm. walls. And we've been having really fun conversations that kind of, let's say, bring a new curiosity to my work. I'm always very mm -hmm. much like, what else can be you know created that helps and engages and people benefit from so mm -hmm. i can't say who we speak to or what the plans sure. are what the projects but it's really interesting and it's something that uh, excites me to go beyond the the digital if i may mm. yeah so take the digital and make it physical in a way it sounds like this episode of the sketchnote army podcast is brought to you by concepts an infinite flexible creative tool for all your good ideas available on iOS, Windows, and Android. The new Concept 6 for iOS has exciting new features, including a modernized Canvas interface, a freshly structured, easier-to-use gallery that integrates with the iOS Files app, and RGB and HSL color options added to its already extensive Copic color palettes. Concept's Infinite Canvas lets you spread out and sketch in any direction. Draw and take notes with liquid pens, markers, and brushes in your favorite colors. Everything you draw in Concepts is a flexible vector, so you can move your notes around the canvas or change their color, tool, or size with simple gestures. Drag and drop images onto the canvas and use layers and grids to organize your creative space. When you're ready to share, export straight to your friends or team. Search Concepts in your favorite app store for infinite, flexible sketching. Really interesting. Um, so um, now we have a we have a sense of who you are, how you, where you came from, what you're working on. Let's talk a little bit about your tools, and we'll start with analog tools first. What are some of your favorite pens and pencils and notebooks and whatever that you like to use? That so that if you do something different and unique, we can share with other people and they can explore these new tools. Yeah, and I'm I'm just like. I wish I knew the, all the names. So, Mike, my problem is I don't know the names <laughs> and I forget people's names and people know that, that some always are like, hi, you, this is so bad, Natalia, start learning names properly. <laughs> so I'm one of those people that struggles. And the tip is apparently when you meet someone new, write their name uh, on a piece of paper three times and it's mm. promised to work. So I'm, really? I've been doing that. So same with the pens. I promise I'll leave the names and everything uh, for you after. But if it's analog, which is not something we do at work. I have to say 99.9 mm -hmm. .9 of the time for the purpose of the environmental future, that's kind of where we stand with this. We work digitally okay, um, and it works for clients. So we don't have any pushbacks on that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to my thinking and my doodles and everything, I kind of recently came back to the tiniest notebooks, which usually oh, really? are somewhere from Japan. Mm -hmm. So I will leave the names because Japanese paper is just mwah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so usually I come back to it with like little notebooks. I have millions of them, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to share the names. And I use a lot of Japanese little black pens mm -hmm. or the old good Stabilo or the, you know, there's a lot of different kind of, uh, I'm sure, pens that everyone knows. I don't use Sharpies because they give me a headache. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I kind of recently came back to the whole, I run in the morning, then I go for my favorite coffee and I sit with my little notebook. And I almost at the beginning forced myself, don't look at the phone, don't think mm. about what's coming up next today, sit down. And whether that's doodling random stuff or whether that's being more like kind of business orientated and doodling my tools and structures and journeys, or whether that's um, interacting with my audience on socials, I do this uh, doodle it hashtag ideas where I'm like, how about doodling what you want to do more of and less of in mm. your life or in your month or whatever so i kind of interact with my audience online and just kind of see if something clicks mm -hmm. but i've been loving clear paper very good quality small notebooks and lots of black pens <laughs> mm. and when you say small notebook i mean how small are you talking like this small or bigger? we're talking okay. really small like a pocket one pocket so I can size run yeah. With it. yeah yeah i can run with it and then i sit down with it yeah that's that's funny because when i did sketching that's where i began because 
I had these large notebooks and pencil. And pencil was there to erase mistakes. And I, wa- I really wanted to go 180 degrees opposite direction. So then I had purchased a Moleskin notebook at the bookstore. But I didn't know what to do with it because it was too beautiful to crack it open and actually draw on the pages. So that's what I took. And I loved it because it would slide in my pocket. I could have a pen in my other pocket and I could go anywhere. And there was no baggage or anything like that. So I, there is definitely a love for those little tiny notebooks that you can take any place. So I can relate to that. Yeah accessibility right otherwise yeah. it's not going to happen yeah yeah great and i can i can imagine which um japanese notebooks you might be talking about but we'll we'll get those from you and put links in the show notes i know that there's uh um all kinds of different ones that we can probably explore and and share with people if you have not if you're listening and you've never bought a japanese notebook i think that's the next thing you need to do because as natalia says the paper is amazing it's just amazing i don't i don't know how what else to say that they've got a process to make amazing paper so that is definitely uh worth doing so let's shift now you talked about digital so your company does all digital tell us about your tools and what what do you typically use for that and you personally as well so um i i will be probably boring as you mentioned everyone says procreate <laughs> and you know what i would lie if i didn't say that of course these tools exist so all the adobe suite and that's not just myself it goes beyond my skills so i don't for example animate but my wonderful team animates and we yeah. work on adobe and all these wonderful software that some humans created thank you and so that's that but when it comes to my day-to-day if i conceptualize if i work with a client on ideas if i need to do a sketch if I need to even do a proper 300 DPI printable piece I do sit a lot on concepts or or procreate or mm-hmm. um, Adobe apps even that work with uh, iPad and I would like right. if I said I use kind of you know how do I say that uh, other tools in terms of drawing iPad is my go-to but equally I've played with Wacom Wacom not sure how you say mm-hmm. it in US yeah. Um, so I know I have an understanding of different tools and um, what else Microsoft uh, Studio the big ones I, I've kind of been sent sometimes things to test which is really interesting and I'm very grateful for but when it comes to to be fair with you when it comes to these set of software tools I wish there was someone who specifically caters to our need mm. and yes there's some tools like remarkable and all these different kind of uh, tech uh, little tools for for um, more creative work but i still believe there's a space for someone to create something specifically for artists so mm. i'm still yet to be surprised i think plenty of opportunities i think the technology is certainly there it's now it's a matter of getting the software to do to think that way um that's really yeah. interesting interesting um so let's wrap up the show and talk a little bit about how can people um well, let me let me rephrase that. I'll say it this way. I usually say, imagine there's someone who's listening and they are a graphic recorder or a sketch noter or a visualizer, whatever they call themselves. They do visual stuff um, and they love the space just like you and I, but they feel like they're on a plateau. They want to go to the next level. What would be three things you might tell that person? Let's say you're, you're meeting them for a coffee and you're they've asked you, I'm I'm just stuck and I don't know what to do next. What would you tell them what would be three things you might share with them super spontaneous so probably depending on how much time you would give me i would maybe put other things into into place but sure. uh number one thing that comes to me is always talk to other people mm. even if they're not from your line of work or artistry or space share with them how you feel what you do open yourself up i would say that at least for myself gave me a lot of constantly learning from other people, whether that's in Mm. business, people in my uh, line of work, uh, other creatives who do completely different stuff. So like poetry, photography, pottery, I don't care. Just sharing how you are, where you are with other Mm. people suddenly can get you to a different space because sometimes we are so bogged down with like our own world because we speak to ourselves Right, you know, and we do this ourselves nonstop. So just, it's very refreshing to see someone's comment, and they could just be like, "Oh, so that's what you mean? Oh, how about this?" And you're like, "Wow, this opened my mind." So I would definitely say share and talk to other people. It's it's refreshing and it's uh, good for the good for the brain and for the ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I would say try to do something completely else. Maybe the plateau comes from the fact that you're doing constantly the same stuff, mm. and you feel a bit stuck in your old ways. So 
try to do something else, meaning is there a course you can take around what you do? Is there a completely new type of uh, writing or drawing you can start developing? Can you work more on how people look like in your stories? Can you work on your uh, type? Can you just try something, use different colors or different shapes in the way you work? Can you scrape half of the details and mm. challenge yourself that it needs to be very clean and very, very focused? So whenever I kind of challenge myself to do something else, I freak out of it because I'm like out of my comfort zone, but right. it levels me up, mm. I guess. And what else? And I mean, again, maybe, maybe it's a cliche, but I truly believe in the whole like, you need to tell yourself that this is what you do, who you are. And as you said, Mike, before, me drawing even 11 years ago in that room was already impressive to those people because right. it was a skill they don't know. So they're like, right. wow. So, so for me, it's like, believe that this is who you are and what you do. And the, and you, it's, it's a bit of an exercise. You just need to tell yourself. It sounds mm -hmm. a bit weird, but how many times I was like, I'm Natalia, I do this and hell, I bring value. You know, like otherwise I found myself so many times feeling like an imposter and like hiding or like, especially if I got any comments around, oh, this doesn't give anything, it's just pretty or, you know, whatever, then, or it's nice to have. I was like, hell is not, not just nice to have. And there's so much impact I've seen it does, but it's my job to be that and mm -hmm. believe that. Convince, and yeah. no, I'm not going to work with everyone. Exactly. I can't convince everyone. It's totally, it's okay it's, if it's not for you or it's okay if you feel like some people don't connect with it, it's totally fine. But believe that this is who you are. I've got this awesome skill. I've, I bring something to this world. My brain thinks in pictures. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. And now share that with other humans, you know, and see what they say. Um, but yeah, I don't know if this was useful. I, I could great. go on, but yeah, these are my first few, few thoughts. Yeah, those are three great tips. I think uh, fantastic tips. And thank you for sharing those for me to remind me and also for people listening and watching so they can be inspired as well. You just never know where these, you know, encouragements may go to, right? Someone three years from now might be watching our video on YouTube and suddenly be inspired. So our, you know, our investments go forward and we, that's why we make them. So thank you so much. Sure. So finally, tell us for those that are listening and watching, how can we find you um, on social media, websites? What are the best places to see your work, to connect with you, to say hello? Sure. Uh, so it's my name that I never thought about, Natalka Design, <laughs> which is above me, N-A-T-A-L-K-A -A -A Design. So you'll see me there everywhere on social. So I try to be everywhere the same name. If you type it, it should come up. So same like website. Mm -hmm. Doodly Do is a funny one. It spells as doodle, L-E-D-O. So if you want to look at that as well, please do and say hi. And I love to connect with anyone in the space. So, mm -hmm. so I would love to hear from any that want to say hi. <laughs> well, that sounds great. And I think we uh, before we started recording, we talked a little bit about the, uh, Natalia's sign. So just for fun, why don't you change the message on your sign Ooh. and show people how this works. So and maybe talk a little bit about the sign and why you decided to pick it up as just a little added bonus. I mean, as I told you, Mike, I am a sucker for good design <laughs> and tech and creative stuff. And a bit of AMSR, SSR and all that stuff. So when I saw this thing and it's called Vesta board, I love Vesta these guys. Board. They're from US, um, a, a founder who started uh, side by side West ages ago. And now they're kind of, I think, flying from my perspective and they won the red dot award for design. Mm. I think it's brilliant and it's just so much fun. And I always like to play with it during my work. It's got the it's clicking and it's switching and here comes the message. <laughs> I should just do it in a mirror for YouTube. It'll be like, ah, I go. should have done it like this. <laughs> so but yeah, if, I love it. I love it. So for the for those of you who are in the US and you haven't been to Europe before, um, these are like the signs in the Berlin um, uh, train station or something, right? Train stations, they were common, I think, and also in airports at some time. And the idea was is that you they could change, you know, what flights coming in and when, and you hear these little click, 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 click the clicking of the mechanical switches, switching the little plates right to the different letters so this basically they made a small board which you can put in your own messages on i think that's essentially what it is right 
Yeah, I have a lot of fun with it. It it's, uh, keeps me curious. I love quotes. I'm a sucker for a good quote. Depending on the day, Mike, it's either something inspirational or motivational or yeah. just like, get up, girl. So so I really <laughs> enjoy it. And it's always a conversation starter. It's a bit of a art slash tech piece at home. Mm -hmm. You can literally just put a clock on it. So I'm like, okay, there's, there's use to it. I like it. Yeah, uh, really I don't good. work for them though, so I'm just a yeah. bit of a fan slash ambassador or nothing else. I'm, it's not sponsored. <laughs> Got you. Well, I, I thought it would be fun to share it for those who haven't seen it before. I'd been, I'd seen these before and I'd been following them and thought they're pretty cool and I didn't have a real application for it, but I guess nobody really does. You just find the application. So anyway. Exactly. My well, nephews came and they started drawing on it. So there's an application <laughs> there and a two hours break for adults. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Natalia, thanks so much for being on the show, for sharing your wisdom and your experience and your life with all of us. It's been so great. And I'm so glad for all the work you're doing and the impact you're having in the world. Um, thank you so much for all the work you do. You're, it's so appreciated by so many people. And I just want to thank say those you. words to you. I think it's important that thank we encourage you, Mike. each other. Yeah. Thank you. And I said that before the show, but I'm a huge fan of your work. I'm a huge follower. I think you've done so much for the visual people community and continue to do so because it sometimes feels quite lonely and it's great to know that there's so many other people like myself and we mm -hmm. all want to just do great work and inspire so yeah. i really really online want to say thank you to you back because i've been following your work for the last 10 years and i'm very grateful you're still here and supporting all the beautiful visual people that bring something to the table so yeah likewise well thank you and, and you're welcome thank sounds like it's going both directions here <laughs> for sure. Well, for everyone who's watching or listening, this will be another episode of the Sketch Note Army podcast. Until the next episode, this is Mike signing off. Talk to you soon. The Sketch Note Army podcast was created by me, Mike Rody, and brought to you by Road Design Studios. It's produced and edited by Alec Polianis of Amp Creative Studios. The theme music was created by John Schiedemeyer. To support the creation of this show, I invite you to buy one of my books, The Sketchnote Handbook or The Sketchnote Workbook. You can find the books on Amazon or go to peachpit.com and use the code RODI40 for 40% off. Please share this podcast with other visual thinking friends and be sure to leave a nice rating on iTunes or your favorite podcast listening app so others can find the show. <laughs>